Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to work on a D-pad, how to make a D-pad for six millimeter buttons. This is the D-pad I made on this new project. This is Pocket Pie Girl, yeah? And uh, after playing it for several hours, for beta testing, right? Um, it came out that I used a flat D-pad, and the flat D-pad actually kind of hurts your thumb. So I created this um, sort of rise on the edges, the raised, and there's a little dip on the inner. A lot like what you would see in um, Super Nintendo controllers. It looks very much the similar way, except maybe it doesn't have the arrows, but today we're gonna take a look at some of those steps on how to build that. So the first thing you wanna do is, of course, create your circuit. Here's mine. This is a Perma Proto with six millimeter buttons, and the first thing you wanna do is lay it out how you want. These are my four buttons that I want. I wanna make a D-pad. So what you wanna do is measure, not just the button and recreate them, but the distance between the buttons. This way you can figure out um, the position of them and create an accurate, you know, uh, D-pad for it. So in my case, there's a little bit of difference, uh, tolerance difference. This is coming in at 21. So make sure you double check your stuff. Here's one way how to um, test against your objects here. So I have my little millimeter buttons. You click on it and hit I for little I icon to bring up your dimension. So six by five by six, that's cool. Including the, you know, the little actuator. And to do the distance, all we do is come up here to adjust, click on measure, and then we can select up to two edges or surfaces. So I'll click on this edge and that edge, and we get 2.45, pretty close to 2.3. Um, of course, that tolerance difference is, I've already tested this out, so I know it's pretty accurate uh, when you print it out, at least on my printer. So once we have that figured out, I used um, sketches to you know, make duplicates of them. So that's one cool way, and you can always use this. Uh, since it's always in the origin, the exact center of it, you can create mirrors and make things very symmetrical. So the first thing I'll do is I need to make the base of the D-pad. Not the base, but the shape of the D-pad. So what I'll do is I'll create sketches, and instead of using the sketch rectangle, I'll use the rectangle from under the primitives uh, menu. So click on that, and the difference between those two is that you can get a uh, center origin, so that's really nice in this case. So I've already done some measurements, so I need it to be nine by 25. I'll hit enter. And now that that's created, I need to create another one on the, on the, on the Y. So I'll just copy that sketch and paste it, and I get my little transform handle, and I'll just rotate it by 90 degrees. And now I have those two. The next thing I'll do is I'll move it up just so that uh, it's away from the shapes. Uh, uh, when you're extruding sketches, it tends to like, you know, cut them or merge to them. So I'm just getting it out of the way. Now I'll go ahead and, and select these two by holding down shift and they're both selected and I can extrude them at the same time. So I'll, I wanna extrude them at four, add four for the distance, that's the thickness and make sure it's a new solid, okay. And now I have our kind of D-pad looking plus shape. So that's, that's one easy way to do that. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to cut this up so that I have five little squares. And the reason why I need to do that is so that when I tweak the edges, I don't get an error when I do fillets um, and, and round off the corners. So, so here's, just follow along with me and you'll see why it's important to do it this way. So. Uh, since we already have our sketches, we can use those to cut it up into pieces. You see how they're intersecting, like how they show the squares? That's pretty much what we want to do. So I'll go ahead and grab this, this one unit solid, and I'll come up here to Modify, and I'll click on Split. Since I have the body selected, I'll click on Split Entity, and I will select this uh, rectangle sketch. You get a little preview of what it's cutting away, and that's exactly what we want. Hit OK. Now we have our first uh, little cut. Now I need to cut this shape using the other uh, sketch. So I'll come up here again, modify, split, and then I'll select, I have to select split entity, and then select my splitting entity, which is that, and it gives you a little preview again. Click away or hit enter. And now I have uh, a bunch of squares that are cut up. That's great, this is what we want. Now the next thing I need to do is we'll, cl we'll click on the centerpiece and just hide it. We're gonna use it later. Now that we have a, a nice little uh, you know, cutout in the center, we need to actually pull these guys inward by one millimeter. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So you can hit P on your keyboard and just select the edges like that and then type in negative one, negative 
negative one, hit enter. And now when I bring back the solid, you'll see I have that one millimeter gap. This is very important to have this gap. If you do not have this gap, when you create your fillets, it's not gonna let you. <laughs> so, because you're gonna raise the edges and I'll show you in just a sec. So the next thing we need to do is we need to extend this shape. So I'll go ahead and click on that edge and then click on that edge, just two of them, not, not all four edges. And I'll show you just why in a second. So I'll pull them out by one millimeter to fill that gap and I'll copy that shape and then paste it and then just rotate it so that it, it fills in the other set right there. So now you'll see I have like this weird series of cut up shapes and you'll see why you need to do it this way. I keep mentioning it, but let's go ahead and do the next step, which is to raise uh, the edges here. And all you need to do is click K on your keyboard. When you click K, you can, you can sort of click on an edge and, and on a surface or edge and modify it like that. We don't want to do that. So in this case, we want to do the edge and you got to be careful because sometimes it's a little hard to select that edge. But anyway, and another thing I don't like about it is you can't select multiple edges. It only do one. So let's undo that. Hit K, hit the one we want and then we'll just do it for each one. And I'm gonna bring it up by 1.5. You can see that's the raised uh, edge there. So we'll do that for all of the edges here. Okay, now that they're all raised, you can see in the profile side view is that uh, you get that nice sort of raised um, button. And now we have our center stuff. So the next thing we need to do is just merge all of those together. So we can just merge them all like that to make one shape. And now you can see we got these little these little gaps here in the corner. So now watch what happens when I hit E on my keyboard to apply a fillet on them. So I'll just go ahead and select the four um, like that, like that and hit one because that's the gap distance we have. And now we have a perfect uh, rounded corner on the edges here. So that's cool. The next thing I'll do is do the same for the outer edges of the button. So they're not sharp when you touch them and press them. Okay, now that they're all selected, I'll just apply the fillet one and now we're starting to look like a nice little d-pad shape here now this next this next thing we'll do is we'll apply a, a fillet to the t this whole top edge here so that it you know it feels really nice when we, when we touch it and press it a bunch of times so if you notice it's um if you look at the bottom it doesn't have that raised thing and you know when i roll over it does the whole thing in this case it's only doing sort of one piece at a time so because we, we did some tweaks to the geometry, you know, you kind of have to select them all like that. And it's just the way, but the most important thing is when I actually apply a fillet, it'll let you apply a fillet, not just one, but two, maybe three. Holy crap. So you, you wouldn't want to do that, but let's do one. Cause that's what we sort of measured it out to. We, we built it for that fillet. So now we got a nice looking fillet, almost done. You notice that the distance between here really mattered. Now we got a super, super symmetrical, uh, you know, fillet there. Looks really nice. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a base. So if we were to create a cutout, this thing would just fall out, right? So we need something to hold it in place. So we'll just use a cylinder like this and I'll go to the top view and change the materials to clear so I can see through it when I lay it on top, lay it on top like that, snaps to the center. I'll tweak the radius to something like, what, 13? 13.5, that works. And then we'll make the height just one mil. Doesn't need to be thick at all, just one millimeter. Now I'll go ahead and move this down like such. And that, that's touching it. And I can merge these two together. Now we have that one unit looking good. And another thing I'll do is I wanna create that little circle. How did I create that divot in the center? I do that with a sphere, click on sphere, change this to like four. You notice it snaps to it. And instead of just subtracting it, you know, pushing it down, I'll actually tweak it a little bit. I'll come up here to scale, change the uni not uniform to non-uniform, bring the Z, is it the Z, bring the Z down. Yeah, bring the Z down. And I'll just type in 0.5 to make it nice and symmetrical. And now I can move it into the shape so it intersects with it, maybe like by that much. And then I can subtract that from that. And now I got my little divot. Another thing you can do is apply a fillet to that edge too. Now it makes it really, really smooth. That's cool. Now one of the last things we can do is create those little arrows, right? The up, down, left, right arrows. And to do that, we can, we can do that pretty easy. We can come up here to sketch, create the polyline and just create, uh, 
sort of a triangle shape like that. And we'll go ahead and extrude it. We'll tweak it a little bit. We want it maybe, well, we want to scale, extrude by one. And then to, to lay it exactly where we want, we can hit the snap tool, hit that surface, hit that surface, and it snaps it right in the spot. We can delete that now that we want. It's not exactly where we want it, but it's at least um, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more where we want it, right? So uh, I'll go ahead and select that, hit Command T, and I want to reorient. I want to reorient this manipulator because if I start moving it, it's gonna like, you know, intersect with it. It's not really moving it right. So what I need to do is, is to change that orientation. So hit Start, and then you can click in the center of it, something like that, I guess. And then we'll move it. Whoops. Once you got that center, we'll hit uh, Stop Orient, and now we can actually move it based on the orientation that we want. So I'll just move it into place like that. Move it down like that. Now I don't like the shape of it so much, so I'm gonna tweak. It, it looks a little bit too too wide. So I'll go ahead and, and click on scale, go to non-uniform, and then just bring this in. Just like I did with the sphere, I'll type in 0 0.5. That looks nice. Yeah, that's way better. So now, um, I don't want it to be raised. I actually want to create a an indent, kind of like I did with the sphere. So I'll go ahead and push it inwards. And remember, if I push it inwards, it's not exactly in the spot. So I'll go ahead and hit the start orient thing again and get it in the center, just like that. Hit stop orient and then bring it in by 0.5. And now I can subtract this like that. But I, actually what I want to do is create four of them, right? So a quick way to do that, hit show sketches we can click on that guy, come up here to uh, pattern, make a mirror. Since we have the solid selected, change it to mirror plane. Select this uh, plane, this uh, this sketch here, and you can see I got a copy already. And with those copies, I could just grab these two, copy, paste, and then rotate. Oh man, just like that. Now I can hide the sketches because they're all over the place. And then I can subtract the D-pad from the arrows. And we're not done just yet. We can also apply a chamfer, not a fillet, but a chamfer to the edges here, so, it, so it's not so sharp when you're, when you're, you know, your soft fingers touch it. Um, well, it, it should work since it's a since it's 0.5. It should work at 0.5, right? So 0.5. That did not work. I'm not sure why it did previously, but this just this goes to show you, um, you know, sometimes shit doesn't work, but. Here we go, 0.5, let's try it on one. And it worked on that one. You can see why now, because it's cutting into the bevel up there. So you wanna move it down a little bit. So if we moved it down just a bit, it would, it would not have that problem. So again, stop orient, move it down by like 0.5 or so. And now when I subtract from it, when I subtract the tr the, that from it, I should be able to do a clean chamfer now. So it doesn't intersect with, yeah, that's much better. So if we did that to all of these, you would have this really nice looking thing. And it's a little bit too big for my taste still. So, you know, I would, I would play with that, but that's a cool way on how to create those arrows. Cause I actually didn't create those arrows for mine, but that's pretty neat. So those are just some of the steps, actually all of the steps that you need to make a D pad with raised edges, a very, very uh, ergonomical way, uh, quite a bit of involved um, especially um, in the order of operations. If you don't do it in the right order, your fillets, your, your, your lovely fillets and chamfers won't work so well. So you always gotta be aware of uh, order of operations. Even coming up with this tutorial, I had to rethink how do I build this shape with the most minimal amount of spaces, but the most useful amount of spaces. Um, well, steps, not spaces. So that's pretty much it. Um, you guys can pick up this file on Thingiverse and play with it. I have the union version, which is all merged, and the non-union version, which is all the separate pieces so that you can still tweak it around and make it for maybe bigger buttons or whatever. So there you have it. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I hope to see you guys next time. All right, bye. <laughs> all right, everybody. See you next time.